Um, Fedora IoT and Fedora 34. Fedora 34 was a interesting release for IoT. Um, we didn't appear to deliver um, much. The main feature that we were planning on deliver um, delivering had issues with RHEL 8 and was not back by Fesco as a result. Um, it certainly meant for some interesting um, discussions. Uh, we will probably try and revisit that in Fedora 35, depending on um, how the team feels about that. Um, but interestingly, I was thinking earlier today about external contributions to um, Fedora. We've had contributions from third party companies um, probably the biggest we've seen in um, the IoT releases. I'm sure some of that's interest from it becoming an addition. Um, we've had contributions from ARM, NVIDIA, Xilinx, NXP, and a number of other big silicon companies that you may or may not have heard of. Um, so that's certainly interesting getting um, them involved. Um, we're working with other vendors to get actively involved. Um, some smaller vendors have also been involved that you may or may not have heard of. Um, companies such as CompuLab, Arrow, um, and Solid Run. And so from that perspective, it's quite interesting because in terms of um, device enablement and technology enablement around wireless and um, ARM SOCs and FPGAs and um, other such technologies, um, we're seeing more and more contributions from the community um, and not individual contributors, but sort of relatively large companies. Um, and to answer the AMD question, um, the deal hasn't closed yet. Um, it is progressing, is my understanding. Um, but yes, so anyway, um, th that has certainly been a um, interesting um, insight, getting, you know, areas, companies, um, and things like that involved in Fedora that have never actively been involved. Um, we've also been working with um, um, on system ready, IoT ready, which is one of their new standards. Um, and Fedora is being actively used in the testing of that. Um, and we've certainly um, I had had some interest around that and working with ARM to drive um, industry standardization. Um, in Fedora 35, we should also hopefully start to see um, new install and provisioning um, and onboarding options. Um, so we have a very basic um, onboarding tool um, called Zaziri. Um, so hopefully we should get some more cycles to work on that. Um, the, uh, the IoT, my team inside Red Hat um, has been busy and focused on various bits and pieces. Um, and we're hoping to see a bunch of that stuff land into Fedora 35 for IoT um, and help drive a bunch of bits and pieces around there. Um, and the team is slowly expanding in size. So we'll have um, some more bandwidth to work on um, Fedora as a whole. So um, yeah, so um, what else was I going to discuss? Apologies, my head is a little bit all over the place. Um, yeah, so where are we going? Um, so as I mentioned, um, the IMA signing functionality um, wasn't accepted for Fedora 34. And, you know, one of the reasons that um, was pushed back was that, oh, it's the ability to lock down Fedora, um, which is completely rubbish. Fedora is and always will be under the control of the user. But the thing with IoT is if that device is on a light pole or a pump out in the middle of the no nowhere, um, the owner of that device wants to keep ownership of it um, and keep control of it. Um, and so it's 
Lima serves a number of purposes. And one is that you can verify at runtime without any external connectivity that binaries haven't changed and they were as intended from the moment they left the Fedora build system, which gives um, a next level of sort of authorization and authentication as so that the user knows what they're that they're running, what is expected, and what was produced by Fedora. Um, so it gives the, the ability to do end-to-end -end verification and set policies of what to do um, when those things change. Um, and from a security perspective in things like IoT, that's very important because it's not about locking down a system and stopping users from being able to do what they want to do. Um, it's about being able to secure systems to ensure that unwanted users can't do what the actual owner of the system um, actually wants to be able to do. Um, so there's work being done there so that users themselves can set policies um, as to how their system will operate and how their system will react when it doesn't appear to be operating in the way that the users expected it. And I think that's overall important. It helps improve the um, reliability of Fedora as a whole um, and the ability for users to be able to verify what their systems are doing as a whole. Um, and with a lot of the hacks and things in the IoT space, that's very, very important. But, you know, it's generally useful for, um, you know, all other areas of Fedora as well. You know, the ability to know that that binary hasn't changed since it was built on the Fedora infrastructure, um, you know, could be years later, um, be able to verify and, you know, could be years later gone through numerous mirrors and numerous systems later, and the user can still verify that, it, they're running what they expect to be running. Um, and so, you know, while some people don't seem to see that point of view, like I feel it's a very useful and important security feature um, that certainly with people I speak to um, has had, you know, a lot of excitement because, you know, securing Linux systems or system, any sort of system um, to the level of security that people expect in a data center when, you know, it's out in the street or out in a field um, or out, you know, anywhere generally accessible is a really hard task to do. And I'm sure many of you have heard, you know, the terms around, you know, security is like an onion with multiple layers to achieve um, the thing and things like I'm assigning and I'm a policies is, you know, one of the layers of that onion to enable us to um, secure that. Um, and like, you know, we've done a lot of work around TPMs and other security related things. Um, we've been doing work around 5G wireless um, and other wireless technologies. Um, we're working with Lenaro at the moment to improve um, Bluetooth support um, in the Linux community as a whole. Um, and we should start to see you know, some of the fruits of that um, partnership and work sort of land, hopefully in the Fedora 35 time, it may be later in the Fedora 36 time frame, depending on how long it takes to get all that work done upstreamed and filtered down into Fedora releases. Um, and, you know, working with partner companies or like companies that are working with Fedora IoT, um, not necessarily partners, but, you know, NXP and Xilinx are working with Fedora IoT off their own back through no, you know, direct work that I'm doing. You know, in some cases, I'm literally just receiving bug reports or patch with patches attached or, you know, patches and, and that that's just fantastic. Um, so, yeah, I think um, that's mostly what I have. Does anyone have any questions? It feels very one-sided here, like I'm talking to myself. Um, Raspberry Pi in what context, Matthew? Um, it should work. Um, I know people have tested it. Um, in the context of IoT, where we don't support graphical output, um, it should all work fine. And we've done quite a bit of testing. Um, I actually have um, a 
you can't actually see most of my desk here. But so that's an eight gig Raspberry Pi, which I literally about an hour ago flashed with Fedora IoT 34. I haven't yet actually plugged it in and powered it up. Um, but like, I'm not sure I want to show people my desk actually, but like it's, this is Fedora testing. Um, and that's a very small proportion of Fedora testing. Um, I currently have no less than uh, 31, 32 devices running various um, components of Fedora 34 from IoT to minimal to um, workstation, XFCE and so on and so forth. So um, there has been quite a lot of testing. Um, I have quite a lot of partial blog posts written around um, Fedora in general for Fedora 34 that I have to finish and publish. Um, and in terms of Raspberry Pi 4 with something like Workstation, it sort of works now, but there's no accelerated graphics. Um, I was hoping that, that the graphics pieces um, would land upstream into uh, 5.13. Um, they don't look like they have landed yet, so I will um, have to look further. Um, the Jetson Nano is working on traditional Fedora very well. Um, I have a patch set that I have to finish up. Um, Matthew has been explicitly asking me about it. Um, I'm hoping to get that done over the weekend um, to fully support um, Fedora IoT. Um, and yeah, so that, that was almost working, but um, I didn't feel like being, I, I was, I had enough Fedora 34 blockers um, and was pulled into other blockers like shim um, blockers to assist um, in the lead up to the release. And so um, I decided I would sleep and not file any more blockers that would ultimately land on my plate to fix. Um, I mean, one of the nice things with IoT is we do a release um, every two to four weeks and that's a full compose release. So we can add features like on a monthly candidates for all intents and purposes. And so um, like I fully expect that we will have another release in a week or so, um, which should add nano support and various other bits and pieces. So yeah, that's one of the nice things about being more agile than a traditional Fedora release. Um, and people did wonder why we have a different release process. And that's part of the reason is so that we can be more agile. And rather than doing like two releases a year, we do like, you know, between 12 and 20 releases a year, depending on um, what's going on. Um, the status of libgpiod, um, is it there and it works? Um, I, and like the various upstream projects are getting more and more support for it. Um, I personally haven't had a lot of time to play with it just simply because I have so much other stuff um, that's on my plate. I would greatly um, welcome assistance in that process, whether it's documentation or various other bits and pieces. Um, there's been quite a few discussions on list, on the ARM um, list about it um, and uh, there are certainly reports of it working well for people. Um, I would like to see better integration upstream with projects like Node-RED and stuff like that. Um, but you know, that's a um, work in progress. And I've been working with a couple of vendors um, around uh, libgpiod, but again, in a lot of cases, it's on their backlogs and it's on their we will get to it list. Um, and yeah, some of those vendors have um, things like BSB kernels that are based on ancient, ancient things prior to um, the 4.8 release, which got the first version of GPIOD. So it, it's sort of in progress, um, but I would certainly welcome anyone that could assist me in the documentation of it. Um, Do 
So the Raspberry Pi 400 does run Fedora 34 um, with all the caveats of the accelerated graphics. Um, and one of the problems we have with the Raspberry Pi 400 is it actually uses the same Wi-Fi module that is on the Pinebook Pro. Um, and that is a corporate head fuck um, between four different companies that now own various pieces of the Broadcom or BRCM FMAC Wi-Fi modules from Broadcom. Um, I have contacts with two of those companies and they actively are now engaging with us to ship new Wi-Fi firmwares. Um, I am working with those two companies also to ship matching Bluetooth firmwares, um, which should improve like Fedora as a whole. So uh, must have been January, we shipped new versions of the Wi-Fi firmware. In some cases, um, we upgraded Wi-Fi firmware from releases in 2013 to releases that were cut in 2020. So like new firmware for devices that are six or seven years old and with God knows how many countless CVEs and what have you. Um, and so, you know, that that's some of the side effects. Um, that was almost, to get those releases done, that was almost a year of my time with emails and meetings and phone calls and those teams engaged with legal teams and obviously you know small things like COVID had impacts on that as well um, we were supposed to get the bluetooth firmware in march it hasn't arrived yet um, but we're working on it um, but the problem with the wi-fi on both the raspberry pi 400 and the pinebook pro is that is now in a company that was sold off from Broadcom and is a completely different company um, with completely different contacts, which we don't actually have yet. Um, so I'm digging through um, contacts and people that I know that have dealt with or are dealing with, you know, those companies to try and get appropriate contacts to um, get appropriate firmwares released for the Raspberry Pi 400. And, and it's, it's a very popular um, 11AC um, wireless module in a number of devices. So it will be really good to get that firmware because you know ultimately that will make a lot of devices just pop to life. But um, you know so sometimes dealing with um, corporate rap, um, corporate teams over some of this stuff is a very deep rabbit hole that involves legal teams and god knows what else so we're getting there um, we certainly have improved wi-fi over um, fedora 33 um, in terms of stuff like that and that will continue to improve So a lot of the other distros that support a lot of like devices use downstream kernels. So major forks, often of kernels that have been like just dumped over the fence and don't get security updates. Um, and so Fedora has a policy around, um, you know, the support has to be upstream. And like we first supported the Raspberry Pi 3 in, Fedora 25, Fedora 26. And we worked with the Raspberry Pi Foundation and Broadcom over their open source drivers for three years before we they got enough of that upstream that we could enable it and things like that worked. And you know, if you if you look at a lot of those um, you know, releases like they'll have like 30 or 40 or 50 different kernels and 30 or 40 or 50 different um, 
images for different devices. And one of the things that I've always been very proud of in Fedora is that we can take a single workstation image and we can run on nearly 200 different devices um, with accelerated graphics and various other bits and pieces using one kernel and one image to support all those devices. Um, you know, a lot of the other distros um, don't have upstream policies and they, like any ship will do. Um, and there was a situation with some of the all winner um, BSP kernels where there was literally a back door where you could get in and full root access. And the distros that shipped those BSP kernels had to panic. And at the time, um, media reached out to me and was like, well, when is um, you know Fedora going to patch these? And it's like, well, we're not vulnerable. We don't need to patch them because we're using upstream. Um, I work very closely with the Pine64 team. Um, I have already sitting on my desk one of the Quartz 64 um, things and in my all my abundant spare time have been working with um, some of the other people in the community that are working on upstream support. Um, the first generation of the dev board that I have has some hardware issues. Um, so there's actually a little um, hardware startup in London um, just north of me in the Olympic Park. And I've been working with them on some of like giving feedback to the Pine64 team about how they can improve the hardware and things like that. Um, and so like, you know, think where we should have um, the first lot of support for the Quart64 in Fedora 35. Um, I'm actually hoping to have a remix image out, um, you know, in a month or two for that, for um, which should be well and truly in time for when the actual devices start shipping. So I hope that answers the question around the um, other distros. Um, the person asking about drivers in the Fedora repo or RPM Fusion repo, what do you mean? <laughs> My first review of uh, the Beagle Risk Five or the Beagle V um, is that it's still sitting in a box on my desk. Um, I, I got as far as downloading the Fedora Remix image for it. It has a stonking great heat spreader and fan on top of it. Um, and what, I, like, my intention around um, that is to work with. Um, I'm not doing another architecture bootstrap in Fedora. I've done more than my fair share of those. Um, but um, my intention is around, you know, getting support to be able to use, like cross compile initially a Fedora kernel, like as in a stock Fedora kernel, um, to be able to boot on the device, um, work out how the low level boot stuff works, um, which is actually unsurprisingly quite similar to um, ARM64, um, and there's a few other people um, in the Fedora ecosystem that I'll be working on on that so that we can get um, UEFI and Grub and you know it working in the standard uh, Fedora way that a lot of people expect. Um, but like a bit of that will be how much time I have and various other bits and pieces. But I've worked with the Beagle community um, going all the way back to the original uh, Beagle, Beaglebone White, um, which was released, God knows how long ago. So, yes, the Raspberry Pi 400 is a B BRCM F Mac, but it's from a company called Synaptics. Um, and there was, uh, let me see if I can find a link to. So Broadcom about three years ago sold off their wireless IoT division to Cyprus. Um, Cyprus has since been bought by um, Infineon. Um, and then somehow Broadcom managed to sell off their wireless IoT biz again three years later to Synaptics. Um, that actually gives a good overview of the absolute complete and utter brain fuck um, 
that is the company's um oh are we over Murray? <laughs> okay. Um well I'll be hanging around um in the general area. I'm sure we have somewhere. Um yeah. Like I'll I'll hang around for other questions if people have it. Um I'm sure um Murray can point me to the location where I need to go. I'm sorry, I literally logged in about a minute before all of this started. Excellent. Thank you, Murray. Bye everyone. I hope this has been useful.